In this demonstration, I'll be using Kanban. Just open the file that we saved as a DXF from SketchUp. Okay, laser mobile shells, fabrication. The first thing you'll notice when you load the file in Kanban is you have all of these odd um, geometry and these are actually the circles, some of the circles. In SketchUp, the circles will have a normal of either 1 or negative 1. And when it has a normal of negative 1, these are the vertices, um, that it will appear on the other side. If you load it in, uh, in AutoCAD, it'll appear normal, but it'll still have that normal. It'll still have the normal of the vertice at negative 1. In Kanban, what you have to do is you have to select it all and you have to mirror it to the other side. So I'm going to use um, a plugin that I have, CAD Extras. And if you don't have this plugin, the CAD Extras plugins, go to the Kanban uh, website and download the, the plugins and the plugin for the CAD Extras and uh, install the, the plugin. And what we'll want to do is uh, transform and mirror. And we're going to mirror about the origin and then um, a point just above the origin, right on that line. And you'll also notice that it kept these there. So um, you want to just do a, a cursory look to see if it uh, put all the circles in there. It, do, it does a copy of it when, you, when it does the mirroring. It doesn't actually um, erase the mirrored portion of it. So they all look pretty good. Yeah, okay, so now you can go ahead and erase these. And now you have a DXF that is uh, you can use in Kanban. Um, you can see that it it opened in a horizontal fashion, and I want it to be the other way around. So I'm just going to do a, a rotate. I'm going to use Control R to do that, and I'll move the the items around as I need the, as I see fit. Okay. So one of the board. This is one of the boards. This is another four by eight. Another four by eight, and the final 4x8. I'm just going to move these onto the first 4x8. Control M for move. And I like to put it about an inch away from the edges. And I do that because we sometimes use screws to screw in the top board and that gives me a little bit of clearance. And let's take a look at the... You'll notice that these holes when I use the alternate and the left arrow or left uh, mouse button, I can view it in, uh, in the third dimension. And you'll see that these are going down only halfway. Uh, and those are the ones that I want to uh, focus on when I'm uh, doing a, a machining operation to make sure that it doesn't go all the way through the, uh, the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and start to do the machining operations on this one. And then once I'm completed, when, once I've completed this one, I'm going to um, do the same thing to the rest of them. So I'm going to work on my first file. So I'm going to do the this board first. Drill the four largest holes first, and I'm using just the standard drill. But I actually do it twice because I'm doing a roughing and finishing pass. So I'm going to press that twice. And this is my first part. I'm going to put all of the geometry and or the machine op machining operations in part one for this particular part. So what I'm going to do here is I have all of the styles saved for roughing and finishing. And you can make a style for pretty much any machining operation you want. And these roughing and finishing styles work for uh, drills and profiles. So I'll do the roughing on the first one. And then a finishing on the next one. And if you need a tutorial on, on how to do styles, just let me know. <clears throat> okay, and let's do the... I'm going to do all of the holes that go all the way through. I'm going to skip the holes that don't go all the way through. And I have a style saved as drill straight. And it uses the can cycle rather than the spiral mill. And you can see the difference between this and the spiral. This one just goes straight down. And this one has a spiral as it goes down. It makes a larger hole with a with the same size of a of a an end mill. Now I'm going to go here and only select the top the top holes and I'm going to do the same drill straight use the drill operation <clears throat> and I'm going to use the 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 drill straight operation and then I'm going to modify the target depth. And the target depth on this would be 
I'm going to go 0.4. Uh, that's a little bit more than halfway through the, um, the wood. And now I need to do the, um, the profile, but you'll notice that if you click on it, it'll only be one side. I need to join everything. In fact, I can join everything at one time, so I'm just going to select everything, press the right button, and then do a join. And the join tolerance I use is 0 0.001. Seems to work for me. Now you'll notice that all of the the parts are joined and they, they make polygons. So I'm going to go ahead and do a profile on this. And I do two profiles for, for this because I do the same thing as I did on the first drill holes. Is they, I do a roughing and finishing pass. Roughing and finishing. And the difference between the roughing and finishing is with roughing, I have a roughing clearance of 0 0.01. So it actually goes outside of its uh, these lines uh, by 0 0.01 and then on the finishing pass um, I go roughing clearance at zero so it goes right on the edge and it, but it also does a full depth increment the roughing does a half of a depth increment so the roughing will do two times down it will cut it twice uh, one half way through and the next one full way through and then the finishing pass it'll go along the edge very close to the edge just taking off a little tiny bit off of the edge to make sure that it it cut it correctly without any load being on the on the end mill it looks like I missed a couple of the holes here and this is a good um, this is a good way to explain how you can add holes to the to an existing operation you can just go to primitive IDs here click on this and click on the the, the three dots and then use your control key to select more and I'm going to select these two and press enter and those should appear as the um, extras to these. So you can see that there's two there's uh, there's two um, passes here but then on the final pass you can see there's a second one that goes just inside of that pass. Okay I'm going to do the remaining parts, uh, the remaining um, machining operations. Okay, now I've completed the machining operations for all of them. I didn't separate them into different parts. I said that I'm, I would have done that, but there's only three parts here, so I'm not, I don't think really it's worth it. And I generally only separate by part if I um, want to do a lot of changes in location for these parts or I'm doing some nesting. So now you'll notice that there are these, uh, these little tabs here. You can move these tabs according to uh, where you need to have holding tabs from part to part or from part to to board. So I'm just going to move anywhere you have holding tabs from one part to the, to the next that are separated. You just want to put them over each. And this uh, takes a little bit of critical thinking when when it comes to um, uh, doing a lot of these and, and uh, these are the same board. I'll go here. Now you want to make sure that they're in the right appropriate places to make the appropriate holding uh, for each part and to um, and for removal, these don't need to be um, changed because there's enough material here that they'll hold. This one is by itself, so I'll probably move these up a little bit. And I will. This one's on this part, so I need one from this part, and I'm just going to steal steal it from here. You can modify the number of tabs by going into the profile and then going to holding tabs and you can modify the number, the spacing of the, the tabs and the, um, uh, it does, it, generally it does it automatic uh, and then when you move them it'll, it'll turn into manual. So you have the tab distance, you also have the tab style which is triangular or square, actually it's rectangular but they put square. And you can have a lead in for the for the tab, and this is what the tab actually looks like. You can see it makes a little bit of a triangular miss on the on the second pass, so it'll keep those two parts together. Okay, so this one is pretty good. Now we just need to make sure these are connected. Okay. So this is uh, complete. I can go ahead and uh, take this to the machine and run it. 
but I'm going to finish all of the rest the rest of these first before I start cutting the parts. Before you start doing the rest of them, you want to save this as a as a G-code file. But I'm going to save it first as the the first say fabrication number one or board one. And then you want to create your machining file, produce G-code, and call it board one as uh, as well. It's going to go into the same folder. Okay, now we can go to board two. I'm going to go ahead and save it as board two, so I don't accidentally save over board one. And I'm going to take out all of the mach machining operations just by using the delete delete key. I can go ahead and just delete that as well. I'll take this one and move it. My move isn't working. I think it's because of my recording program. This one is pretty close to the edge. I'm not sure if I want that. I'm going to go a little bit closer to this edge here. About halfway. And this one should be... yeah. Okay, so I've positioned the next one. Looks like the first two are just cutouts. So I'll go ahead and do the machining operation for this and save it. Uh, save the machining operations. Okay, the second one is complete. I'm going to save that one. Board number two. Machining, produce G-code. And when it doesn't ask you about whether it's saving the file or not, it just means it saved it as the same name as this. I can show you again. Produce G-code, it'll ask me if I want to um, overwrite, and I don't. It's board number two. So I'm going to save the next one. So all of the machining operations are complete, the files have been saved, and the G-code has been produced. So now we can take these files uh, to the CNC machine.